And then we got the old cross rope. I don't know if you guys know, but we like to jump rope from time to time. So this is the rope that we... We are recording! Hi! Live gentlemen. from Medellin, Colombia. We've only got two more shows that are going to be live from Medellin, Colombia. Two? Uh, no, three. Three more. No. We have this one. one. Oh yeah, two more. Three more. Three more. Yeah, this one, and then two more after this, and then, where's the next one going to be? How are we going to do that? Ooh. I don't even know. I don't even you know what we're going to do Ask the Zen Dude separately. It'll be maybe we'll take turns. I don't know. Yeah. Or maybe we'll be in the same place for the fourth one if something goes through. Like, oh, you, know, you know. Yeah. Anyhow. A lot of stuff brewing. A lot of stuff brewing. Oh, brewing it up. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to number uh, episode number 12 of Ask the Zen Dudes. You ask the questions. We give you the answers and hopefully provide you with some smiles along the way. Um... That was nice. That was beautiful. Dude, did you like that? Yeah. yeah. Smiles along the way. Smiles. Maybe a chuckle or two. Oh, oh a chuckle. A hey, chuckle. Listen, you can't, you can't guarantee it, but that was a chuckle. chuckle. That was a chuckle. <laughs> meetups coming up in uh, three weeks. Oh, yeah. Guys, okay. So meetups, check this out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to list them off. First one, this Saturday in Medellin, Colombia, April 29th, Ciudad del Rio, 12 p.m. We will be there in front of the art building. Come say what's up. We'll be dressed in, you know, probably all black. And uh, we'll have a big smile on our faces. Yeah, and then do the think tanks. So look for us. Look for us. The other meetups, we got May 31st, Wednesday, 5.30 p.m. in Philadelphia. All these links, by the way, if you go to Zen Dude Fitness, our Zen Dude fa Fitness Facebook, Facebook page. Facebook.com forward slash Zen Dude Fitness. We'll link it. Link I'm going to do a link. And uh, then uh, New York, Saturday, June 3rd, 11 a.m. Um, and then Boston, June 7th, which is a Wednesday at 5.30. Check out, check out the link for the details of where they're gonna be. Uh, someone asked a great question though. Someone was like, Dan, what if I don't wanna jump rope but I just wanna meet you, can I come? Can kick it. Absolutely, yeah. This is not, like this is really just a meetup. Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring my rope. I'm gonna bring my music. So if we want to do a workout and people there want to, that's totally fine. It also can be just like a meet meet up kind of thing where we get there and I just get to meet all you guys and we get to interact and have fun and then go eat some awesome food. So get ready. First three people at any of these meetups in person at these meetups, not in person, not like face invited, you, not like you signed up for it, like face to face. First three people get crossroads. For free, Barry Freeman. VIP digital member. Also known as Be Free. Be Free. Um, Be Nasty 2.0. That's right. Barry asks, any advice for people like me who are looking to transform and lose 100 plus pounds over a year that would be different for others who may have a shorter term goal? Brandon, go ahead. My man, we really want everyone to grasp fitness in the same way. Whether it's someone who has a long way to go or someone who's just trying to maintain where they are right now. And that's that like, this is gonna go on forever, right? So don't try to like go super hard, do something unsustainable, like putting yourself in like a huge calorie deficit, never eating like any foods that you like. Instead, just every single day, get yourself in a calorie deficit until you reach your goal and move your body, you know, at least like three to five times a week in addition. Yeah, man. I mean, and my additional advice for that would just be it's, Okay, one thing that actually is a little bit like tangible and helpful that you might not have expected us to say, use the scale because the scale is going to be your friend when you're mm. losing 100 plus pounds. And I True. say that because Barry, you stepping on the scale and let's say you start at 250 and you get down to 230, that will give you a confidence boost of like, okay, I'm a fifth of the way there. Mm. The scale, we say the scale doesn't matter because it only fluctuates, like it can fluctuate up to 10 pounds up or down in a single day. So if you have to lose 10 pounds, screw the scale. But if you have to lose 100 pounds, it is a good marker for like, okay, I'm a third of the way there. I'm, a, I'm three quarters of the way there. Um, other than that, man, I would, I would just totally agree with Brandon. You can't, Especially if, if, if you're gonna, if you have to lose 100 pounds, it's gonna take you longer than someone who has to lose 30 pounds. So therefore, it can't be a shit experience. You can't expect to cut out all these foods that you like and get there. Because dude, it's gonna take you at least a year to lose 100 pounds. Barry, you can eat french fries. Yeah, you dude. can. 
Yeah, I know that scares the sh** out of you, but you can eat french fries. Because Understand if, that. If you cut everything out, then you are going to be miserable, and then as soon as you lose that 100 pounds, you're going to gain a ton of it back because you're going to fall into like eating these foods again. It's not about, it's about being consistent, man. It's about being super consistent and still just tracking the amount of food you're eating and you know, understanding that there's gonna be hiccups along the way, but consistency is the most important thing. Oh, I want Barry to compete with himself. Barry, I want you to look in the mirror every morning and be like, let's go. Today's the day. Today's you the do day. Thing or not, today's the day. Every single day is the day. Understand that you just win every single day and they stack on top of each other. Go and feed it, let's go. That's right. Andrew Joseph asks, if you couldn't do ZDF, what would you want to do as a career? Ooh, Dude, that's a I know exactly what I want to be. I want to be a, I would like to be a sports psychologist for the New York Knicks. Dude, I feel I'm, like I'd be a professional dancer. Like if I could, if I could be one thing, like my biggest mm. ultimate dream in the world is to be a professional dancer. Shannon asks, hey guys. Hey Shannon. I'm wondering if you can tell us what the correct breathing technique is for jumping rope and other exercises in your program. Breathing is into the nose and out through the mouth. And when should we inhale, exhale? Go ahead, Brandon. Into the nose, out through the mouth. You should inhale when you are doing, um, it depends what exercise you do. If you're doing bodyweight exercises, like whenever you're doing the, so whenever you are contracting your muscles, I would say be breathing out and when you extend them, breathe in. And it's kind of complicated to think about. So really in general, just continue like a good breath flow through, through your nose, out through your mouth. And then when you're jumping rope, I know Dan has a specific cadence he follows. I just I actually do like a boxing type breathing, which is a little different from like what we've talked about in the past, where like I breathe in really fast and like deep through my nose and I kind of spit out the air in like small, like small amounts of air. And that allows me to like, I don't just kind of calm my body down. I don't know how it works, but it, it's really helpful for me. And then Dan, you can tell me you do. Mine's just like simple, like breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth, counting each breath one to five, and then just repeat that. Focus on being in the present moment. Alex asks, so I've been cutting down on carbs after I saw in the simple meal system that endomorph should limit to 25%. Then in terms of however when you're, sorry, I'm just gonna paraphrase this guys. More, more in building muscle, should you, when you no longer want to drop weight, I'm going to start focusing. So basically, guys, what Alex is asking is he is more of an endomorph, and what we recommend in general, the general recommendation for an endomorph eating is that 25% of their calories is carbs. It might be a little bit higher if you're someone who's like a mesomorph or an ectomorph. However, what really is he's talking about is if he wants to build muscle, should he increase those carbs? My personal take on that is that you do need carbs to build muscle. Um, but you shouldn't have to increase your carbs like an insane amount, dude. If you want to increase them to 30%, that's fine. Protein is going to be the most important macronutrient, so make sure you're hitting that number every day. Um, having said that, you should still be eating carbs because carbs are needed to build muscle. I hope that answers your question. And also, increase the total amount of calories you're taking in as well. Like those carbs can like make up those additional calories, but make sure you're doing it because you need to be eating a calorie surplus if you're trying to put on mass. Bam. Bigs! Bigs! Does dojo stand for something? Where did that term come from? Good question. Go ahead, the dojo stands for a place where people come to learn. That's what it's about. You know, it's like a, we did the playoff Zen dude and like, you know, we, all of our ninja. things are like ninja, martial arts. So we're like, yo, here's a dojo. Jojo is a place, a safe container for you to come and learn and become a ninja, a yeah. mass 11 ninja. People sometimes get mad though, because we released like a ninja series, then a samurai series. And they were like, we don't like know. level of difficulty. They were like, no man, like Ronin was totally the next one. So we don't know anything about this stuff. We yeah. just, we're just, we're just messing around. We, dojo, we know that like ninjas train in there. So we were like, mm -hmm. well, ninjas can talk in the Facebook group. It's a dojo. Chris asks, what has been your best method to use to say no and break a bad habit. Bad eating habit, drinking, not working out, anything else you can think of. I got a simple answer for you, Chris. Bam! Sometimes you have to dig deep into the pain to really get yourself to take positive action. That's why I noticed like there's bad habits I used to have in the past. Like one bad habit I had was like, I would constantly like tell people about like what my plans were for the future 
and then it wouldn't happen and it's almost like I find a way to sabotage myself so that's one thing that I've cut out by just like digging into that pain and being like yeah how did it feel to not have that follow through and by doing that I just like am way better at that now I like it I like it Malou asks you guys obviously have a good bromance going on thank you <laughs> thank you no, no. but what is your couple name like Brangelina for the previous power couple that is used to refer to two as a couple is it Dan Brand Brand Dan Epimer Whitstein is there a better option it's a funny thing to think about during a workout dude I love that man I love questions like this I don't know man what's your take I don't know man we're the Zen dude so if we're not the Zen dudes then we're then we're coming up with a new nickname for us I feel like we just started calling ourselves Zen dudes like we're the OG Zen dudes yeah I feel like the dudes, because like the dude is the Big Lebowski. Like when someone says, oh, the dude, they know they're talking about the movie, The Big Lebowski. Maybe we could become the dudes. The dudes? I mean, a lot of people refer to us as the dudes. Oh, the um, dudes. But if we had to pick sure. from this list, um, mine would be Dan Brand, because Brand Dan just sounds too much like Brandon's name, so it would be tough to differentiate. Uh, sure. So I think mine would be Dan Brand. Hmm. Dan Brand, bro. Hashtag Dan Brand. Daniel, hello, Daniel. Ah, uh, Mr. Bulcher. Daniel asks, should a 73-year-old man, my dad, follow a macro regimen? Is it healthy for that stage? Should he 16-H fast? How can I make it more simple for him to hit his numbers? His patience for what he calls diets is pretty short. He's 73. Yeah, sure. I know what you mean, that can be tough. That can be tough with your parents, go ahead. Um. Yo, I would just put him, he doesn't need to fast necessarily. Have him eat when he's hungry and just put him on uh, a slight calorie deficit. So we have a calculator. We always throw it in the description below. Go plug his numbers in there and uh, you're gonna get something pretty close to what he can start with. And just have him take it week by week, you know? Let's have him have stacks and weeks on. If he's seen results, um, keep it going. If he's not, start to drop the calories down a little bit and yeah, make sure he's whole foods. Also, also like, what's the goal here? Because if, if, you're, if your dad, for example, is super overweight and has to lose 100 pounds and you're doing it for his health, then definitely calorie deficit, focus mostly on eating, fasting, like everything Brandon yeah, said. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, I guess I just assumed that he was overweight, but if he's not, then Dan, definitely. I guess, I guess my um, thing would be like, if he's not, like what's the goal here? Because like, I don't think people who are personally, like I plan on being shredded and in shape until I'm very old. But when I'm like, I'm not saying 70 is crazy old, but like 70, I'm gonna be a lot less focused on having a six pack and just like my overall health. Mm -hmm. So I just think that's something to consider in line with what we also said. Gerardo asks, can you just do the thing, can, just, can you just do the thing even after the program you, what if you run into a plateau? Basically, Gerardo is asking, how, what, what do you do to break plateaus? It sounds like he, I don't even think Gerardo is in a plateau right now. I think he's just like, all right, I, I got shredded. What do I do now? And the answer is, you just put it on repeat, man. Just like go through the program again. And if you want to start to make your own workouts, you can do that as well. But it's just part of your lifestyle now. So like there, you just have to continue to try to make things interesting. Maybe try different ways of training. Mm -hmm. Like I'm doing boxing right now and Dan obviously dances. So just, Keep trying to have fun with it. Yeah, and I would also say like, if you're running into a literal plateau, like your body, you have weight to lose and it's not coming off, I would say eat in a calorie deficit and then one day a week, make sure that you do a refeed day where you eat um, about 150% of your calories and macronutrients, so you overfeed. That's gonna keep your metabolism uh, firing at the level it needs to so that you can continue to lose body weight when you're in a calorie deficit the rest of the week. Corey asks, Dan Weber, Corey! When you're in NYC, will you try to connect with Casey Neistat slash invite him to do a collab video jumping together? That's a great question, and I would say yes, except I have very little time. And to be totally honest, Casey's a little bit unaccessible. I know that could be seen as like an excuse, like, well, Dan, did you email him? No, I personally have not. Um, but yeah, I think right now, our focus is on connecting with people who are a little bit more reachable and we can do, we can actually set up videos and do them right now. Um, but this question now makes me realize, Dan, you should just email mm, Casey. You might as well just email him. Thanks, Corey. Send him uh, a jump rope to mail time. Ah, yeah, it's true. Does he still do that on his new blog? Oh yeah. Nice. Hussein asks, this is a weird one. I like weird, <laughs> I like it weird. Mm -hmm. But here it goes, does sex count as exercise? Brandon, go ahead. Uh, if you're getting it in, 
for like six to eight hours straight, I would say yes. Otherwise, my dude, how long, how long are you going for? If you're going for 10 minutes, then no. If you're going even for like 40 minutes, I would say that's, you know, you get the blood flowing a little bit, but you gotta be going for multiple hours if you want, in, in my opinion, if you wanted to take the place of your regular exercise. I, I think it depends on what we're considering exercise. I think sex is a great way to move your body and moving my body, like to me, is exercise. So now, exercise simply to me, again, means moving your body. So does it count as exercise? Yeah, I think sex totally counts as exercise. Does it count as being able to replace jump rope or going to the gym? Absolutely not, okay? So don't think that you can just sex your way out of going to the gym. Although, what I would recommend is have lots of sex, because sex is really good for you, uh -huh. and it's healthy for your brain and for your body, and do the thing. That's my recommendation. Dude, Hussein's gonna just like be picking girls up over his head, just doing, <laughs> just doing presses, yeah. just doing squats. Yo, girl, I wanna have sex, but only if I can hold you up. Wolfie Dragon asks, any advice where to pick up some hot girls when I come over to Florida next year? That would be interested in a 40-year-old man. 47-year-old man. Get on Tinder, Wolfie, all right? Wolfie, dude, Get on just Tinder. come over to the US and use your charm and like your awesome self, dude. Just start talking and like girls are gonna come. Just be yourself, bro. Girls are gonna come up to you. And get on Tinder. Yeah, and get on Tinder. Jim asks, tips on how to get enough calories when you're on a tight budget. I'm supposed to be eating 3,000 calories a day and I'm struggling to make that as I don't have a lot of food. Uh -huh. Go ahead, my dude. Builder. All right, you should go get a giant Costco tub of peanut butter because nuts, nut butters obviously, have a ton of calories in them. They're super calorie dense. So. If you can get a huge tub, maybe take that nut butter, throw it in a blender with, uh, I don't know, some, some milk. I mean, for almond milk, if you can get it at a discount store, I think you can, still pretty cheap. Maybe some almond milk. Um, and uh, get yourself uh, some protein. It's a pretty high calorie meal right there. Also, rice, beans, and mm, eggs. Rice, beans, and eggs. Dude, I, yo, I actually want to eat rice, beans, and eggs right now. Like, that's, that's part of the reason I said Dude, it. I'm planning to eat some Band-Aid of Paisa tonight. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm going there. Uh, oh, yes. Yes, doctor. You bastard. That you eat your own? Really? I'm going there. Well. You know, I've been doing something uh, different lately. I've been eating breakfast around, like, 9.30 in the morning, and then I don't eat again until, like, seven at night and then I eat my dinner then. I like that. Like a mid, you're like kind of fasting, but kind of not. Yeah, and I'm not really, I'm not doing intermittent fasting, but like, I don't know, my, that's my digestive system just seems to like that. Cause in the morning then I've been really hungry and then I just like eat like four eggs and one of those yuca repas, which is probably like a 400 calorie meal. It's not that big. And then uh, I'm just good. I feel good for nice. us until eat in the evening. Yeah. Something to consider. Something yeah. to consider. Yeah. Um, dude, yeah. Eggs, rice, beans. Eggs, rice, and beans. Um, you're going to get a lot of calories that you're way. Gonna like and you're going to hit your feel. macros. Mm, yeah. Tuna, too. Stephanie asks, so I started with intermittent fasting and I'm really liking it, but I'm confused about the cheat day. Am I refueling by going up on my calories to my regular need? Do I just stick with my deficit if I'm doing okay? Down seven pounds. So I'm motivated to keep going. Nice, Stephanie, good start, good start. Keep going and be consistent. Even on the hard days, you have to be consistent. When you're not losing weight as fast, girl, keep doing your thing, go ahead. Mm -hmm. You kind of answered this earlier. Um, when you talked about like being in a calorie deficit six days a week, mm -hmm. and then one day a week eating about 150% of what like your normal calories are, so I'd recommend that. Yeah, if you're eating in a deficit, like, there's something about, I wouldn't, by the way, a cheat day is just eating like, you wouldn't eat your maintenance calories. You would eat like 500 to 1,000 calories over um, your maintenance calories, okay? So that'd be like 1,000, probably 1,000 to 1,500 calories over your calorie deficit, just to clarify. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, don't, I wouldn't stick with a calorie deficit because eventually you are going to start feeling tired and fatigued from not eating enough because you're, again, your energy balance is off. You're burning more than you're consuming, so eventually that's not gonna work. So we do recommend doing a refeed day once a week. Remy, what will happen if you take protein without exercising? Well, we all, I mean, obviously you're gonna shrivel up and die. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hate to tell you, but you're gonna die. <laughs> I'm pretty sure uh, if you're a guy, your testicles fall off. Yeah, and dude, your hair turns not even gray, it turns white. 
Protein is just a macronutrient, man. Yeah, what would you have? What would happen if you ate a chicken breast without exercising? It's just protein. It's protein. So the answer to that question, to be concise, man, uh, dude, you have to eat protein. So if you have some protein shake, that's fine. Um, just don't eat a bunch of like shakes and supplements if you're not getting your protein through food, and also if you're not working out. Just think of protein, as Brandon said, as a macronutrient that you have to hit, my friend. Steven asked, what is the main purpose of the four week challenge? Is it to increase fitness or to lose body weight? Both. We want you to increase your fitness, your endurance, your agility, your athleticism, and lose body fat if you need to. If you're already happy with where you're at, then keep eating maintenance calories, do the exercise to build your fitness and get more toned. Yeah, yeah. Donald asks, dude, I haven't been saying that. Donald asks, my dudes, what are your favorite spots to skip rope in Austin, Texas? You dude stay classy, thank you, thank you. Dude, we'll definitely holler at you, man, when we're in Austin, Texas next. We'll definitely make our way back there at some point. Mm -hmm. Favorite spots, do you have any favorite spots? Oh, dude, I would just, this isn't a very cool thing to say, but dude, I just always jump rope uh, in my building. It's not a very fun answer. The Hope Graffiti Gallery. I've made a bunch of videos there. It's my favorite place in Austin, Texas. There's graffiti everywhere. There's a great view of the city. You can bring like, you know, a little wine and cheese there, have a little picnic, or mm. you can exercise, or you can exercise and then have a little wine and cheese while you look out over mm. the graffiti. You know, there you go. You know. Michael. How can you drink a beer? How can you drink beer with all those empty calories? Michael, let me tell you how I do it. So, I open my mouth up, I open the beer up, I pour the beer. Yo, Mike, come on, man. It's, uh, drinking beer is enjoyable. The same reason why we, uh, you know, consume marijuana sometimes, you know? Yeah. Actually, not the same reason. Kind of the same reason. <laughs> Listen, it's just, it's enjoyable. It feels good to relax and have a beer. And if you do it in moderation, man, like it's definitely something that can fit into your calorie and macronutrient budget. And it's not something you have to stress about. Yeah, Michael, I, remember, the substance is never the issue. Alcohol is not the issue. Abusing alcohol is the issue. Mm. Sugar, mm. not the issue. Eating too much sugar is the issue. Matthew, how do you avoid copyright strikes for the movie scenes that you guys use in your videos? Please help. I'm not gonna lie, Matthew. I feel like we've already answered this question. Uh, maybe we've, maybe we, do. if he's posted this a third Multiple time times. and we just haven't, then thank you for being persistent. Um, Matthew asks, how do you avoid copyright strikes for the movie scenes that you guys use in your videos? Please help. Well, we actually don't avoid, we don't avoid them. Oh. Yeah, we get them. Uh, or we just like, uh, we don't monetize a video or we're using less than 30 seconds of the video or whatever movie it is. Yeah. So you're allowed to do that. Yeah. Yeah. It is time for the sponsors. The mm. sponsors. The sponsors. Sponsors company. All of our sponsors are from France. Yes. Probably the worst French accent yeah, dude. ever. Sorry, French people. You guys Sorry, guys. Sponsors. Sponsors. All right. First, let's talk about the protein powder from Athletic Greens. I've been using this every single day in my shakes with some frozen fruit, some bananas, some organic peanut butter, and almond milk. Yum. It's linked in the description below. It'll help you get grow your muscles. So mm -hmm. take it. Athletic Greens. This is the green juice we take when we don't have vegetables and fruits readily available to us. And we also just take it in addition to our vegetables and fruits sometimes because we're trying to get, you know, extra energy, extra immune system boost, et cetera, et cetera. It's like, an, it's like a vitamin on steroids, yeah. basically. And then we got the old cross rope. I don't know if you guys know, but we like to jump rope from time to time. So this is the rope that we use. Yeah. And if you want it, it's linked in the description below for 10% off. Do you want it? Ladies and gentlemen, we would just like to say thank you for joining us on this journey of another epic Ask the Zen Dudes. Um, dude, we got only a few more shows here. Let's rock it, bro. Dude, one thing, one thing I forgot yeah, 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 yeah. Close was, uh, you guys, if you wanna listen to this show, like if you're busy sometimes, you can't watch the video, I know they're kinda long, go subscribe to our podcast, it'll link the, below in the description, cause you can listen to them and like do whatever you're doing, like commute to work or go for an afternoon walk and you don't have to watch it and keep your head down, you know, sometimes it's not safe. Um, yeah. So yeah, yeah, that's it. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, doses.